Gardens can give great joy. They can fill your life with fragrance, put food on the table, provide a habitat for native animals, and let birds of a feather flock together. As our cities and suburbs change, so too does the behaviour of our wildlife. Deciding to attract birds into the garden by putting out food for them requires some careful consideration. Griffith University's Professor Darrell Jones is an urban ecologist and he's an advocate for feeding birds responsibly. So why do people feed birds? Oh, it's a profoundly important thing for some people. It's a way of connecting with nature in a really simple way. You put out a little bit of food and these truly wild birds come to visit us in our own yards. It's fantastic. Wild animals come to us and that's for lots of people, a really important experience. It's a connection to nature, and it's so easy to do. That's the other thing. So what got you interested in feeding birds? I'm an urban ecologist. I study wildlife in cities, and it struck me almost immediately that everywhere I went, I became aware that people were feeding birds, whether it was, you know, grandma with the kids down at the park throwing the bread to the ducks, or people feeding magpies in their backyards. There's a lot of people out there feeding birds. So if we do feed birds, will we change their behaviour? Oh, absolutely. But then again, we've changed everything about their la the landscape. We've, we've demolished their, their habitats, we've built houses and put in roads and all those sorts of things. So yes, putting out un unusual sorts of food to feed the birds, which is not what they normally feed on, will change them, but so has everything else we've done. So there are right things to do and wrong things to do with yes, feeding. Yes, there are, Jerry, and it's not very difficult. Um, there, there are some simple, small rules, and if, as long as we take notice of them, we, we'll be fine. This is just a, a plastic dish that would go under a normal big pot plant, and all I've done is attach it firmly to the corner of the balcony, put a couple of holes in it. It's the right sort of size for the big birds that would be able to come. It's easy to uh, put the food in. It's easy to see from, from, our, uh, from our kitchen there and easy to clean, which is the crucial thing. We sweep down any of the debris that was on there from the last, last time that we put some food out. I always wipe it down with some vinegar just to keep, kill anything that might be there. And the reason that we're doing this, and it's a crucial thing to do every single day, is to make sure there's no possibility of spreading any disease. So I've got my feeding bowls. What's the best type of food to use? Well, this might surprise you, Jerry, um, but normally everybody seems to think that, that seed is the go. And so you can get all sorts of commercial mixes of seed. There's a whole lot of different sorts of seed. But what you need to look for is a variety of different sizes of seed. They often have sunflowers, they have millet, they have all sorts of bits and pieces. There's a huge variety of them. Now, done a bit of research on this for our local birds, especially the lorikeets and the parrots which come to here. And you might be surprised to learn that they absolutely love blueberries, raspberries, chopped up apple, and even frozen peas, wow. which is extraordinary. Now, this is what I would give out for the week. So I vary it a lot. I put out some seed and some blueberries one day and then no seeds and chopped up apple the next day or bits of banana or whatever it might be. And you can see them come and they, that when they arrive, they go, what's today? I mean, what's this crazy stuff that's going on? And that's good because these birds are naturally eating an enormous variety of things and that's what we need to do. How much food is enough? That's a really important question because we have to remember that we're not trying to provide all the food that they need. It's a cup of tea and a Tim Tam equivalent, not a three course meal. So I've worked out that around about the amount is about a cup's worth, just a normal measuring cup's worth. This is not going to feed lots of birds lots of food, but this is just enough for them to bring them in, give them a little snack and off they'll go on their way. Traditionally, if you thought plants that bring in birds, you've always thought of the grevilleas and the calistamins and all those nectar-bearing yes. plants. We've now discovered that that's not necessarily the only thing. Some of the birds that come to those types of plants are the noisy miners and the rainbow lorikeets, and they, they tend to be just a small number of, if you like, aggressive birds that often keep them out. What we need to do is be more adventurous in, in what we have, 
And I'm even suggesting that we put in plants that attract insects. The insects that actually eat the plants, which is bizarre, isn't it? But if the insects come to eat the plants, the birds will come to eat the insects. Because although there are some birds which eat seed, the majority of birds don't eat seed at all. They're insectivorous birds. And what we now know is even birds, so-called honey eaters, most of the time eat insects. So we need insects to bring those kinds of birds in. So in summary, when feeding birds in the garden, not too much, keep it nutritious, be very, very clean, and then just enjoy it. Mm -hmm.